Hello there. If you are a middle school math teacher trying to figure out what kind of activities, resources to use in these last few weeks of school to just get you through the end of the school year, you've come to the right place. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my th the three exact resources I'm going to be using in my classroom to get me through the last few weeks of school. If you are that teacher that's like, stop, say less, where are they? <laughs> give me them, give it to me right now. Use the link in the description box below and you can grab them totally for free to use them in your class today. But if you wanna hang with me for the next few minutes, I'm gonna walk you through these resources, show you exactly what they look like and how to use them. So let's dive right in, shall we? The beauty of these resources is that, are that, is that, <laughs> that it covers a variety of concepts to really bring the math full circle for your students this year. So let's jump right in. The first resource is all about perimeter and area. And honestly, all three of these resources will work whether you teach sixth, seventh and eighth or eighth grade or, a, you know, like all three grades or a combination, because I think in all three of these grades, we really have to cover some of these resources. Although I will say this area and perimeter resource is definitely geared more towards sixth and seventh, but you can definitely use it for eighth grade too. Okay, so this is our area and perimeter. It's called the Carnival is Coming to Town. Um, and it's printable, so you can print one copy for yourself and then kind of print the student pages, you know, print more of those student pages that you need. You don't have to print all of these pages. Uh, so what this is, is it says the carnival's coming to town. Your students are trying to figure out using the following pages if all of the attractions will fit in the, uh, all of the carnival attractions will fit in the town hall of where the carnival is going to be. So they're gonna have to use um, the map. They're gonna have to use the information about each of the attractions to figure out, will it all fit? Will they help, can they help the mayor figure this out? So on this page, page five, it tells you what the dimensions are of each of the carnival attractions. So you can see here, like the carousel has a radius of 45 feet, bumper cars has a length of 88 feet and a width of 80, so on and so forth. I'm not gonna go through every single one because that would just take forever. Um, so this page is the students will cut out each of the attractions and then place them on their field to see if it all fits and where would be the best place for them. So really your students will need pay this page, page five, six, and seven. And then it, you could either print the formula sheet out for your students or you could project it onto you know, your, your screen if you have a projector or just write it on your board if you don't wanna print it or you can just print it and give your students this information. But they probably already have this information somewhere in the notes that you have taken throughout the year. And then there are review questions to answer each of these questions. So will all the attractions fit? What is the area of the field? So on and so forth. And then there's an answer key. So that is all about area and perimeter. Next, we have planning your summer vacation. My students love this because it totally gets them even more excited for summer. And this activity is all about writing equations, using variables, and determining a budget really to see what their, summer, what their dream vacation is gonna cost them. So students can decide whether they're gonna go to Disney World, Bahamas, or to Paris. And it says, once students have picked their destinations, they'll be guided through creating a budget, and then they will be creating expressions to represent their budget for each section, and then substituting values for their vacation plans. Again, this would work for sixth, seventh, or eighth grade. So the slides are kind of broken down depending on which vacation your students choose. So let's just stick with the Disney one. So here it says you've saved $5,000 um, to spend on a vacation, and the students are gonna go through and think about how they wanna plan their trip. So how many people do they wanna go, list their names, they're gonna decide. So this is the Disney. So here it's going to ask them to create an expression to determine the cost of plane tickets, create an expression to show the cost of gas, 
Are you going to fly or drive? What is the total cost of the trip? Which resort do they want to stay at? Number of tickets. Obviously, there's more information here. I'm just kind of making this pretty general. Food, which is really important. Souvenirs for the trip. And then final budget for the trip. This really makes things, you know, super, super hands-on for them really applies to their life and it gives them a little bit, it kind of gives them an idea of how much it actually costs to go on a vacation. So speaking of budgets, our very last project or activity is a budget project. And this is, it says grade seven financial literacy because I originally made it for grade seven, but it would totally work for sixth grade or seventh grade. In this budget activity, students are going to determine a personal budget so they're going to go through, figure out basic cost of living. What else do they need? Cost of living in their town. How much money do they have to to make in order to live the lifestyle they want to live? Then they're going to figure out how much it costs, what it's going to cost them to have a monthly income of $5,000 a month. And then what it's going to cost, what life will look like if they have an income of $8,000 a month. There's an area for reflection and then it goes into different types of savings. So we talk about simple versus compound interest, which is really cool because I think I don't know if we if teachers really talk about this too much. And then finally, we talk about net worth. What does it mean? What does your net worth mean? How do you calculate it and why is it important? Again, if you would like to grab these three activities to use in your classroom, these activities are not meant to be completed in a single day. I would suggest you spread them out over at least two days, especially the budget activity, especially the planning your vacation activity. I will say if you use them in during one class period, it's doable, but it's going to be very overwhelming for your students and they will be stressed. And that's not the point. The point is to have a little bit of a fun um, you know, as we get through these last few weeks of school and just do a little bit of something different. Again, if you want to grab these three activities, they are totes free to use. You can download them, print them, use them to your heart's desire for your students. I know they will love them. Use the link in the description box below and let me know in the comments what you think. I cannot wait to hear about it. Until next time, my name is Kathy Martin and I'll see you in our next video.